Ah, oh, g'day, welcome to Farming Live Australia. The weather has cooled off and it's time to get serious about some fencing. We have a fair bit of fencing that either needs rebuilding completely or just repairing and, and improving. Today I planned to go over and clear the fence line but it didn't work out that way because the weather had other ideas and we've got light rain. So I decided that the next best thing was to get all the fencing gear ready and organised so that as soon as the weather came good we could get stuck into it. The first thing I'm going to do is make a couple of new tools for twisting the plain wire. I've cut these two bits of stainless steel rod. They're 200 millimetres long and they're 3 eighths or 9.5 millimetres round. First thing I'm going to do is chamfer the ends. What I'm going to do is drill a hole in the end of each of these that will accept the thickest wire that I use, which is number eight. Here I have a bit of number eight wire and I'm just going to check that it fits. That drill was a 3 16th drill. I've now got a 5 16th drill in the drill press and I'm going to chamfer the corners a little bit. Sometimes when you chamfer these off, or most times in fact, it's not really quite smooth enough on the corner and it will burr the wire up a little bit. So I'll just show you what, how that happens. So you've got your wire like that and you want to twitch it up. See it's biting into here. If you look here the chamfer is not smooth enough and it bites into the wire here a bit and you really want it to run smoothly on the wire if you can. Normally I don't bend the end like that but I'm trying something new. Sometimes you get in a position with a fence that the fencing is actually in the road and I think this being bent will allow you to attack it from two different sides depending on which way it fits better. So in other words you can use it this way and the handle is down here but if you use it this way the handle is up here I just did that a bit more and you can probably see now more clearly where that chamfer is cutting in here I've got a four millimetre round grinding stone That's marking the wire up a lot less and it's working really good. I'll do that with the other one, then we'll move on to something else. <coughs> this is me old bucket that I've had me fencing gear in for about 20 years and it's a bloody pain in the neck. I've got everything in there, ties, old bits of wire. And when you go fencing, you've got to pull it all out and check what you've got because you can't see what's in there. It's just a total pain in the backside. So I'm going to try and work out something to do with it. First thing I'll do is take out the tools. I got all sorts of bits and pieces. I don't know why I'd want that in there. We've picked it up off the ground somewhere and thrown it in there. 
I've got this old head of an old strange axe. I've got a few of these coat screws in there. Half an old sister clip. One of these old gate fittings. And it just goes on and on. So as you can see, I really need to sort that out. I had a bit of a think about it. And I've come up with a bit of a plan. And that was to try and find a box that I could fit the tools in only. So just keep the tools in one box and keep the ties and all the other crap in something else. That would reduce my problem a lot because at least I haven't got to look through all the ties and other crap to find me tools. The strainers are the longest thing I've got. And as you can see, they don't really fit in here. But if I put it, if I put them around that way, and cut these divisions out, they'd fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut these couple of divisions out and see where I go from there. I haven't finished at that, but that'll give me an idea if it's going to work. Uh, how is that going to work? That would actually work. I just need to do a bit more cutting a bit better. A little bit better than that, and it had come out pretty good. I'm certainly not going to win any points for finesse, but I guess it's getting there. That can fit like that, that looks good. I've got a little corner pocket here, maybe I could put my little things in there. We've got this other part of the strainers that we need to put in there. Got my thing that I put in the drill. I got the pliers. This is my twitching bar, it's tapered. And I made it short because sometimes a long handle gets in the road. I need to make an alteration to it. It's not good enough like that. When you've really got something tough to twitch up, it's not long enough. That's all the fencing tools in there, and they fit quite easy. Now all I have to do is make it official. She's officially branded. Now I have to somehow work out how to make an extension on this. I've cut this bit of three-quarter stainless tube and that slipped over the end of there would make a good extension handle, but it's very sloppy in there. But I've been able to find this piece, and it's a really good fit in that tube. Unfortunately, the bar doesn't quite fit in it, but I think I've come up with a way to fix that. I've cut a piece about three and a half inches long, and it fits in there nicely, but as I said, the bar won't go down in it. I've clamped the piece of pipe tightly in the vice grip. I'm going to go and drill a hole down that pipe and see if I can make that bar fit. So in the bit of three-quarter tube, I've drilled a hole right through. This is the piece of tube that'll fit the bar and it goes in here. It's a little bit tight because of the swarth. So you can see now that the insert is down past the hole. I'll weld it there and there and up around here and then it'll be good. I'll try to put the drill in and clean it out from the welding. Oh, that's backwards. Ooh. Ooh. Starting to get there. Pretty hot. Okay. I don't want it to jam when it's over in the paddock, so I'll try and loosen it up just a little bit more than that. I want to get that out because if I leave it in there when it's hot, I probably won't get it out. If I wanted to make a shrink fit like that, I couldn't do it probably. Very close to it. I'll just polish this up a bit. Might help it a little bit if it's smooth.
Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Polish the other side up a bit. Ah, oh, perfect. Look at that. Just beautiful. That's about got the tools sorted out. The other thing I want to do is make some tensing ties. This first one where I've taped, that's a fairly long tie, but we're going to need some of those. And the next ties I need are about 9 or 10 inches long, and therefore the normal pickets. And what I do is I go around where I want the ties, and I put some masking tape, and I want another one about here. Go along to where I want the next one, which is about there. Will work. When I've got it all taped up, what I do then is cut them in between each one. You can do that in various ways. Some people use an angle grinder or a cutoff wheel, and this is not my preferred method unless I'm doing quite a few at once. When I'm only doing three or four wires at once, I just use the bolt cutters. So we've got a bunch of them, I pulled a couple out. You can see they're about the right length for star pickets. All I'm going to do for the rest of the day is clean up the bucket, put all the ties only in the bucket, find somewhere else to put the other bits and pieces. And the rest of the Sunday, all half an hour of it, I'm gonna have a rest. See you later, thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. See you next time.